Mars has been on a direct collision course with Earth for weeks now. The destruction has already started with massive tsunamis and earthquakes. Now our planet is beginning to crack and gravity is significantly changing. But how bad will this be? How could it create a new planet? And is there any way humans could survive? This is What If, and here's what would happen if Earth collided with Mars. 15 days before impact. This won't be the first time Earth has had to deal with a massive collision. Over millions of years, asteroids have rained down on our planet. One of the biggest, the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Now, despite its massive impact on Earth and our history, that asteroid was only 10 kilometers wide, about the size of 90 football fields. Mars, on the other hand, has a diameter of 6,800 kilometers, and it's coming straight at us. The red planet is normally about 225 kilometers away from us, but at this moment, it's just 4 million kilometers away. From this distance, it looks like a smaller red moon is approaching us. Now, just because it hasn't made impact yet, doesn't mean we won't be feeling any of its effects. The moon affects the Earth's tides, so what happens when another massive celestial body comes near our planet? Well, the gravitational force would be so strong that Earth's crust would start to bulge and our water would be rising. It could rise so violently that multiple tsunamis become a real possibility. More on that in a bit. Three days before impact. Okay, now at just 800,000 kilometers away, Mars is twice as far away from Earth as the Moon is. Given its angle of approach to Earth, we'd be looking at a red half moon getting bigger and bigger by the minute. But the red planet is 10 times heavier than the moon and is already tugging at everything on Earth with much greater force than the moon could even dream of. It's creating havoc. At this point, tides are rising 30 to 50 meters high. Deep inside Earth, tectonic plates begin to shift and creak, but it's gonna get much worse. In 36 hours, Mars will reach the same distance away from Earth as the Moon. Then, the tides will rise 10 times higher than usual, 60 to 100 meters. Vast stretches of coastal areas and cities would be flooded. Say goodbye to Miami, Venice, and any other city near a large body of water. Millions of people will drown. There will be widespread panic as people on Earth see Mars's relentless approach. Earth is starting to crack, earthquakes shake the globe, volcanoes erupt covering the surrounding landscape in hot molten lava. People are running for underground bunkers grabbing any power source available. Will they make it? Well, getting emergency assistance to one disaster site is challenging enough. Now, imagine trying to do that when you've got countless disaster sites, many in remote locations. And, oh yeah, most of the planet is without power because this incoming collision has wiped out our infrastructure. Fun times, right? Well, thankfully, before the big crash, some great minds were already cooking up a solution. One company called Nano Nuclear Technology has been developing these fantastic micro-reactors. These tiny powerhouses can produce between 1 and 20 megawatts of thermal energy that can be used as heat or converted to electricity. Micro-reactors can be deployed and removed quickly, making them perfect for emergencies. But here's where it gets even cooler. Nano Nuclear isn't just developing any old micro-reactors. Hailing from Mount Olympus and Valhalla, their projects are Zeus and Odin. I guess when you're dealing with world-changing tech, you name them after Greek and Norse gods, right? Zeus, the solid core battery reactor, and Odin, the low-pressure coolant reactor, are the perfect duo to save us from this doomsday scenario. But we don't need to go to these extremes to see their benefits. You see, these micro-reactors are helping us tackle real crises today. 
their small size and portability make them perfect for remote communities that lack access to the central power grid. Plus, they can help our fight against arguably our biggest crisis right now, climate change. Microreactors can significantly reduce emissions from electricity production by providing a zero-carbon alternative to coal, oil, and natural gas plants, ensuring a steady power supply without the intermittency issues of solar and wind energy. But nanonuclear energy isn't stopping there. They're thinking big by going small. They're working on becoming a vertically integrated company, covering everything from cutting-edge portable microreactor technology to nuclear fuel fabrication and transportation. Talk about covering all your bases. Now, if you want to learn more about how nanonuclear technology is changing the world and fighting climate change, well, check out nanonuclearenergy.com. But hey, maybe climate change isn't our biggest worry right now because we have another planet crashing into us. So let's get back to that, shall we? 4.6 billion years ago. Okay, wait a minute. Before we get into what happens next to Earth, how did we get here? What sent Mars hurtling toward us in the first place? Well, Mars could have been pushed out of its orbit by a rogue planet. This is a planet that exists without orbiting a star. There are billions of these kinds of planets roaming around our universe. They're sometimes hard to detect, though. Why? Well, because they don't give off a huge amount of light, and the light they do reflect is at wavelengths that are incredibly hard to detect. So, it's possible a rogue planet could have entered the solar system undetected, shoved Mars from its current orbit, and here we are. And like I said earlier, it's not the first time a planet the size of Mars has collided with Earth. About four and a half billion years ago, just after the solar system formed, baby Earth and a Mars-sized planet crashed into each other. You can see it today. The debris from the collision eventually formed the moon. At this point, people on Earth are in a frenzy, trying to find shelter from this terrifying catastrophe. But violent quakes shake the ground and toss people about. Tsunamis rage, and millions of people are drowning. Wherever they can, people are running to underground shelters, hoping for some level of protection. Mars is just 10,000 kilometers away. The gravitational force of Mars and Earth are pulling at each other intensely. Mars is starting to pick up speed, reaching 10 kilometers per second. What's happening now is incredibly interesting. As it's making its way toward Earth, Mars is starting to crack. Why? Well, Earth has 10 times the mass of Mars, and because of this, our planet is exerting gravitational pressure on Mars, causing it to break. Now, there is a possibility that Mars crumbles entirely from this pressure. Maybe the people of Earth live to see another day, but unfortunately, that's not likely to happen. Because Mars is moving so fast, there's not enough time for Earth to break the red planet apart. What happens next isn't gonna be pretty. 20 seconds before impact. If you looked up now, Mars would be filling up nearly the whole sky. It's now just 200 kilometers above Earth's surface. It's entered the upper reaches of Earth's atmosphere. An enormous shock wave has hit the atmosphere. Due to this, you're finding it hard to breathe. Mars's gravity is pulling at our atmosphere. But that's nothing compared to what's coming next. Cracks in the surface of the Earth will be widening, creating massive canyons. The biggest earthquakes ever don't hold a candle to this. Buildings crumble and entire cities will be reduced to rubble. If you're on Earth as this is happening, well, there's not much you can do. Just hold tight for what's about to happen. Moment of impact. As Mars makes contact with Earth's surface, gravity will be about 30% of what it usually is on the side of the Earth where the crash happens. That's because Mars's gravity is 40% of Earth's and it's pulling in the opposite direction. Both planets' gravitational forces are now pulling at each other at the same time. But that's only on one side of the planet. On the other side of the world, people will actually be 3% lighter right before they die. 
Thanks, Mars. That's just when people want to lose weight. Now, at the moment of impact, a massive amount of heat is generated, the equivalent of billions of nuclear bombs exploding. After the initial collision, these two rocky planets briefly separate, but that doesn't mean the battle is over. They'll eventually come together again and re-collide. Now, with the amount of heat generated, both Earth and Mars will get liquefied. A shock wave will rock Earth, reverberating through the entire planet, all the way to the other side. Within 20 minutes, everyone on Earth would feel the impact. And everything on the surface of the planet will burn, creating a mass extinction that no living thing could survive. Earth's surface will crack open down to its core. Mars will have broken apart. Large pieces of Mars's core will embed themselves into Earth's core. The entire top layer of the planets will be molten lava, and our two mantles will be mixing together. The energy from the collision will change the speed of Earth's spin. We might spin faster or slower, we don't know. And molten debris from the crash gets ejected into the sky. Smaller bits will fall back to Earth as molten lava, while the larger pieces will start to orbit Earth, forming a ring. Some of the debris will collide with the moon, and some will be ejected further into space, hitting Venus and the asteroid belt. Over millions of years, the debris collisions with the moon will make the moon bigger and heavier. After the collision, part of Mars will be incorporated into Earth. Earth will be slightly heavier. Now, since Mars is 10% of Earth's mass, well, maybe Earth would weigh about 5% more than before. But this new Earth will be devoid of life. Could life ever emerge again on what was once our blue marble? Well, without an atmosphere and without water, it's hard to see how this would happen. Maybe in the future, comets will crash into Earth delivering water, and over billions of years, life might begin again. But with the sun getting hotter and hotter, it's likely going to boil off that water within the next billion years. Prospects for new life on Earth don't look promising. <laughs> wow. That would be one devastating end to all life on our fragile blue marble, but that's not the only way Earth could get snuffed out. There are lots of other apocalyptic scenarios available to us in the future. But that sounds like a story for another What If.